Chapter 6. The Man in the Moon is Entirely Unhelpful. Yet again. As darkness fell, it got colder. Neither Jack nor Jamie wore particularly warm clothing, and Jack was still barefoot, so sitting outside became more and more uncomfortable. And this fact was strange to Jack. As Jack Frost, it wasn't like he'd been unable to feel the cold. On the contrary, he felt every change in the temperature, but he welcomed it. Jack Frost loved the cold, whether it was just a mild winter breeze or a blizzard in the North Pole. Jackson Overland did not like the cold. But Jack was stubborn. He kept sitting on Gothi's balcony with his freezing feet dangling over the edge. At least the starry night was clear and beautiful. Jack kept finding himself looking at the moon, feeling like a serious talk was due between him and Manny. Jack's silent lie was exposed when a gust of wind blew at them and an involuntary shiver went through his body. Jamie's eyes snapped up to him. Are you cold? he asked. Jack didn't quite meet his eyes, but pulled the corners of his lips into a faint smile. It's a bit chilly, he admitted. Huh, that's weird, Jamie said. Yeah, sure is. He brought his knees to his chest. We can go back inside if you're cold, he suggested. Jamie didn't immediately answer, and Jack turned to him to see that he was looking out into the air with a frown on his face. Then he caught Jack's gaze, and he shrugged. I'm all right, he said. He sounded distracted. Jack raised a brow. Jamie? Jamie pressed his lips together, folding his hands. He looked up to Jack again. How does it feel? He asked uncertainly. You know, to be like this? To be human? It was a question Jack was unsure if he was ready to answer. Not just because he wasn't sure how to, but also because he didn't quite want to accept it. Surely there was a way to reverse it, so maybe he didn't need to come to terms with it at all. It would be easier that way. Not that anything ever seemed to be easy with him. Jack looked away thoughtfully, pursing his lips. Hmm. I feel heavier, he said. Might be because I can't fly anymore. Also, I have this really strange feeling in my stomach, like... He patted his stomach like North would do. Not exactly painful, but... Jack's stomach rumbled. The sensation had been building up for a little while, and Jack knew an opportunity when he saw one. Or, in this case, felt one. Jamie laughed, his head falling back. You're hungry, he said, before giving Jack a weird look. You've never felt hunger before? Don't you need to eat? I guess I do now, Jack said, avoiding the first question. The fact that he'd been human before he was a spirit was definitely a conversation he wasn't ready to share, especially since he still remembered so little about his past life. Aren't you hungry? Jamie's eyes narrowed, and he nodded. When you mention it, he started, but trailed off when he spotted something below them. Jack followed his eyes. Oh, he said with a small frown. He thought Hiccup would be bringing them dinner, but apparently not. Gothi was flying on her small, well, smaller dragon towards them. It looked almost exactly like Fishlek's dragon. What did he call it again? A uh, Gockle? Grunkle? Grinkle? Jack and Jamie got to their feet and backed away as Gothi flew up to the balcony, landing with a thud that shook the entire hut. Jack got a belated nervous jolt in his stomach when he realized that he wouldn't be able to fly away if the hut fell apart. Jack! Jamie hissed from where he was standing slightly behind him, watching Gothi climb off a dragon. Hello, Gothi, Jack greeted her in that other language. Though he'd never heard a reply to anything before, it was still fascinating that she actually responded to his voice. Jack supposed it would take him a few days to get used to being seen and heard by everyone. How was dinner? As expected, Gothi didn't say anything. She did, however, smile at him before grabbing a woven basket hanging from the dragon saddle. She walked over to Jack and handed it to him before sending Jamie a look. She nodded at him. Jamie hesitated for a moment. Um, hello? He said in English, sending Jack a bewildered look. Gothi studied them before she gestured at her dragon, and the two of them wobbled inside the hut, still without saying a word. Jamie stared after the dragon, mouth hanging open. Jack removed the rag covering the basket and contained a bowl of some kind of muddy brown stew and some pieces of bread, though they looked more like rocks than bread. 
It wasn't the prettiest food he'd seen, but Jack wouldn't judge, no matter how disgusting it looked or smelled. What did she say? Jamie asked with awe the second Gothi disappeared into the hut. What language was that? Oh, that? I don't know, Jack said and grinned at Jamie's confused expression. He looked around for Baby Tooth and found her in the basket, inspecting the food with a skeptical expression. I'm not fully orientated on what's allowed or not among tooth fairies, but I have a feeling Jamie will need to be able to understand what people are saying around here too. Baby Tooth? Baby Tooth looked up at her name, and Jack sent her a smile. Could you do that thing you did? he asked. Jamie looked confused as Baby Tooth flew up in front of his face. His eyes went white as she touched his forehead, and Jack quickly steadied him when his body started swaying dangerously. Yeah, it feels really weird, Jack sympathized as Jamie grabbed onto his arm to keep his balance. Jamie's brows were deeply furrowed, and he blinked a few times before looking back at Jack and Baby Tooth. What? Why did you... How was dinner? Jack said, repeating what he'd said earlier. Jamie's eyes lit up, a smile spreading on his face. He looked at Baby Tooth. That's amazing! How did you do that? Baby Tooth smiled shyly, tweeting something in reply that was still pretty much incomprehensible, but Jack got the idea she was being modest. Did you see that dragon? Jamie whispered, even though he was still speaking English and Gothi wouldn't be able to understand anyway. It was so bulky and fat. I've never seen a dragon like... I mean, not that I've seen a real dragon before today, but I think it's called um, a gurgle or something, Jack said. But then Baby Tooth tweeted at him. He frowned. A grogle? Uh, a grunkle. Your memory is better than mine, Baby Tooth. It's a grunkle. He opened the door and peeked inside. Gothi was standing in the witch corner, and Jack had a feeling he knew what she was making. He looked at Jamie. How do you feel? Jamie shifted his weight. It took him a few seconds to answer, and judging by his pale complexion and the bags under his eyes, the answer wouldn't be anything that could save him from Gothi's infamous soup. I... could have been better, he eventually replied. Jack nodded. Well, remember what I told you about North's medicine? Yeah, what about it? I take it back, and I think you're about to get a taste of what made me change my mind. Jack glanced into the hut again, and then sent Jamie a smile. Jamie was looking at him with a worried and still very confused expression. But it'll make you feel better, I think. You think? Jamie repeated. Jack couldn't help but find Jamie's distress a little bit funny, so a sympathetic smile was sprinkled with poorly masked amusement. Jamie almost glared at him, but still followed Jack onto the hut, very tentatively. They walked over to their spots by the hearth, and Jack sat down to take out the contents of the basket. He found a couple of wooden bowls and some rusty cutlery. He wrinkled his nose. Hope it tastes better than it smells, he mumbled. Baby Tooth chirped doubtfully. Gothi came over, handing Jamie an almost identical bowl to the one she'd handed Jack earlier. Jamie looked at her, glanced at Jack, and then took it. Thank, he started in English, but stopped himself. He hesitated. Uh, thank you, he tried again, and the Burkean's language rolled off his tongue as if he'd always been able to speak it. Gothi smiled at him and nodded. She walked back to the front door and opened it, bringing her fingers to her mouth and whistling. Jack and Jamie exchanged curious glances. A few seconds passed. The sound of rapidly beating wings made it to Jack's ears, and in the next moment a bunch of the small dragons from before came flying into the room, landing on the floor and furniture and on top of Gothi. Whoa, Jamie whispered. Gothi walked across the room, nodding at them as she passed, then disappeared into another room, all dragons in tow. Jack clicked his tongue, looking back at Jamie. Welcome to Burke, he said. She has so many dragons, Jamie said incredulously. They're so much smaller than I imagined. They all come in varying shapes and sizes, Jack said, thinking back to Hiccup and his friends. I talked to some of the villagers earlier, and it looks like everyone has a dragon companion. This one guy, Snot something, Snot, snot Loud? Snot Loud. His dragon was really huge. If Jack remembered correctly, that was also the same type of dragon that had made him trip over his own feet. 
Jamie's expression was full of wonder, and Jack grinned. This place doesn't seem too bad, he told him. Then he looked down at the bowl from Gothi, and he sent Jamie an expectant look. Well, at least when you're finished eating this, you probably have nothing to worry about. Jamie sent the bowl a long look and sighed. I guess it would be rude to... Uh, okay. He visibly steeled himself before bringing the bowl to his mouth. A snort escaped Jack when Jamie made a disgusted grimace. It's not funny, Jamie hissed at him, which just made Jack laugh more. Baby Tooth also chirped, but Jack wasn't sure if she was laughing or reprimanding him. Jamie's mom's tea, North's medicine, and Gothi's soup had been the last things Jack had tasted the past few days, so maybe that was why their dinner wasn't completely horrible in Jack's mouth when they finally started eating it. It wasn't good, but it had been so long since Jack had eaten real food, he wasn't sure if he just remembered food to be better than it actually was. However, a glance in Jamie's direction told him that the food wasn't very impressive, to put it mildly. But they both forced it down, and by the time they finished eating, Jamie's eyes were drooping with sleep. Jack was surprised he'd been able to be up for so long in the first place. Maybe Gothi really was some kind of witch after all, with healing potions and everything, but Jamie was still in severe need of rest. Jack, too, really, but there was something he had to see before he could let himself fall asleep. How do you feel? Jack asked once Jamie had settled back under his fur blankets. Jamie pursed his lips, then shrugged. I'm not sure, he mumbled. It's a bit, you know. He didn't finish his sentence. Jack tried for a smile and nodded. Yeah, I know, he said. Jamie was looking at him from under heavy eyelids. His face was pale and the rings under his eyes were still dark. He looked way too tired for a little boy, and Jack's chest ached at the sight of it. But then Jamie smiled, and the tiredness eased over ever so slightly. At least we're here together, he said. Jack couldn't make himself feel all that happy about that. He'd gladly be here alone if it meant Jamie and Baby Tooth were safe. Still, Jamie's optimism brought a smile to his lips, a warm feeling momentarily replacing the guilt in the gut of his stomach. And we'll get back together too, Jack said. I know, Jamie said, and continued speaking even when a yawn garbled his speech. We'll just have some fun here in the meantime, right? Jack laughed. That's what I like to hear, he said, and ruffled Jamie's hair. Sleep now, all right? Then we go look at the dragons tomorrow. Jamie hummed happily and closed his eyes. Good night, Jack, he murmured. Sleep well, Jamie, Jack replied softly. Jamie let out a soft sigh and didn't say anything more. Jack didn't move as he waited for his breathing to even out. Baby Tooth sent him a questioning look, but didn't say anything, and after about ten minutes, Jack looked at her. Is he asleep? he whispered. Baby Tooth glanced at Jamie, then nodded. Jack silently got to his feet. He grabbed his staff even if there was no reason for him to have it anymore, but he felt vulnerable without it. The floor creaked softly beneath his feet as he walked out onto the balcony again, closing the door quietly behind himself. He sat down near the edge, bringing his knees up to his chest. Baby Tooth landed on his shoulder, chirping at him. I just have to check something. Jack replied, looking up at the sky. We don't know where we are, or or when we are, but surely not so far back that... I mean, the Guardians have only been the Guardians since Dark Ages, but they were around before that, right? So... Baby Tooth tweeted softly. She wasn't sure. Jack looked back at the stars, searching for that flicker of gold he always waited for and enjoyed every night. Come on, Sandy, he whispered. The children of Burke were probably asleep by now. The Sandman would appear at any moment. But he didn't. Jack sat there until ten minutes became thirty, and then an hour, and more. Nothing shimmered in the sky except the stars. And the moon. Jack's gaze drifted to it, as so many times before. So what now? Jack asked. He felt Baby Tooth's eyes on him, startled by the coldness of his voice. Jack clenched his fist. Nine months as a guardian, and now this? Still no help? Still no answers? He waited, but of course all he got was silence. Jack sighed, looking away from the moon's glow. Are you even there? He asked quietly. He guessed he'd never know. 
Not on this time and place, anyway. Baby Goose chirped again, and Jack felt her tiny hand on his cheek. Jack closed his eyes and counted to ten, forcing his frustration aside. He then looked at Baby Tooth and tried for a smile. Sorry, I'm just... It was hard to put everything he was feeling into one word, so he didn't try. He got to his feet. I should sleep, since that's something I have to do now and all. What a bother, right? He chuckled, and Baby Tooth smiled, even if the laugh sounded hollow. Jack didn't try to pretend that the cold didn't bother him, and went back inside. He put his staff down beside his fur skin and huddled under the blankets, taking comfort in the warmth from the fireplace. It had been a while since Jack had been able to appreciate the warmth. While he sat there, staring into the fire, exhaustion was quick to creep up on him. Still, he remained awake. Jack wondered if it was possible to be too tired to sleep. It didn't make much sense, and it had been too long since Jack had actually been in need of sleep that wasn't due to a sudden sickness he hadn't even thought was possible. He didn't know enough about being human. It had been too long. His eyelids were stinging, and his eyes were dry. His body was aching and begging him to lie down. Jack didn't move a muscle. His mind was a mess. He was afraid to close his eyes. He was just... afraid. More afraid than he'd been the last few months. The fear he'd felt before that, before he became a guardian, was different. It was a fear he'd grown used to. The fear he would always be alone. Now he wasn't alone, but he wished he was. All he wanted was for Jamie to be safe, but what could Jack do now that he was a human? Everything in his power didn't seem like enough. Though he supposed he should be grateful that they'd appeared in a place that was seemingly friendly, he could never be too sure. For someone who'd yearned to be seen for centuries, knowing that he was visible to all these people made Jack's stomach tighten in a mix of apprehension and excitement. To say that he'd been nervous about talking to Hiccup and his friends was an understatement. And not only had he been talking with several human teenagers at the same time, they'd also been riding on dragons. Even if the dragons were supposedly tamed, it didn't change the fact that Jack was powerless, and he didn't know how these wild-looking, horn-wearing people defined the word tamed. In the end, he'd had nothing to worry about. Jack had managed to keep his cool, at least he hoped he had, and he'd been quick to decide that Hiccup's friends were a fun lot. They all seemed just the right amount of weird. Sure, they'd been gossiping about Jack and Jamie, but who could blame them for that? Jack had been gossiped about for three hundred years already, sometimes with contempt, sometimes with admiration. Sometimes about his irresponsibility, sometimes about his teeth that apparently sparkled like freshly fallen snow. At least the twins' gossip was original. He'd give him that. And through that whole conversation, there were a few things he'd picked up that seemed important. One, dragon riding was normal on Burke. Hiccup had said he and his friends were the first dragon riders, keyword being first. It implied they probably weren't the only ones. Even Gothi, a scrawny old lady, had flown up here on a gronkle, and if she could ride a dragon, surely anyone could. Two, he knew that Astrid and Hiccup were the ones who'd saved him from the blizzard. Jack didn't want to imagine what might have happened if it weren't for them. And three, Hiccup was the son of the chief. If that was good or bad, Jack didn't know. He'd never been the type to see eye to eye with higher authorities. Whether they were spirits, humans, or a mysterious orb in the sky that pulled Jack out of a frozen pond, only to let him wander aimlessly around the world for three centuries without saying a word. Funny guy, that man in the moon. But at least Hiccup seemed nice. Here, the key word was seemed. Jack was as skeptical about them as they knew they were about Jack. In the end, even if the conversation had been mostly pleasant, Jack was relieved when Baby Tooth appeared in front of his face, alerting him that Jamie had started to rouse. Mostly because he was glad Jamie was waking up, but also because Jack wanted a reason to excuse himself. It was almost laughable. Speaking to children and spirits was one thing, but speaking to human teenagers? And being perceived as a normal, or next to normal, human teenager in return? Jack let out a long sigh and looked over at Jamie's sleeping form. 
Jamie had so much faith in Jack, it was almost terrifying. At the same time, it was just about the only thing that gave Jack faith in himself. Jack knew they would find a way back. He knew he would get them through this in one piece. He didn't know how, but he knew that no matter what, he would keep Jamie safe and bring him home. Because that was what a guardian did. Blind hope, but hope nonetheless. Maybe he'd find some more distinct hope tomorrow. Tomorrow, Jack murmured. Baby Tooth looked at him, tilting her head to the side. Jack smiled at her, and with a deep breath, he settled down on the fur skin, making himself as comfortable as possible. We'll figure it out tomorrow. Good night, Baby Tooth. The sound of knuckles rapping against the door brought Jack out of his sleep, and he was halfway onto his feet in a second, hand wrapped around his staff. Then he sighed exasperatedly at his own skittish reaction and forced himself to relax as he straightened up. Jamie was still asleep, and Gothi didn't seem to be coming out to open up, so Jack supposed he'd have to do it. He tried not to think too much about how hard his heart was beating as he put his hand on the doorknob. He opened the door. Oh, Jackson, Astrid said, her eyes widening slightly at the sight of him. Good, Jack, Jack interrupted. Astrid blinked, and Jack sent her a tired smile. Call me Jack. Jackson is such a mouthful. But good morning to you too, Astrid. Jack, Astrid repeated, and returned his smile. You look like you just woke up. Jack raised a brow. No offense, your health seems to have improved a lot since yesterday, Astrid said. How do you feel? Jack shifted his weight. His body still felt heavy, but most of the pain had subsided. Mostly, he just felt stiff, and he doubted his energy levels were as stocked as they usually were. Though that might just be because he was a human. Right now, however, he felt all right. Good, Jack replied. Gothi's healing is, uh, like magic. Astrid chuckled. Yeah, sure is. Don't worry, he'll probably get out of here soon, she said, and Jack wasn't sure if she was serious or not about Gothi using magic. It was a difficult answer to fish out of someone without revealing the fact that Jack was so serious about the question. Astrid hesitated for a moment, eyes starting to the side of Jack's head. And your little brother? Jack's chest tightened. Jimmy being his little brother had seemed like a good cover at the time, at least since Hiccup had just assumed that he was, but he'd forgotten to tell Jamie that part. Jack glanced behind himself and saw that Jamie was still sleeping, with Baby Tooth sitting on top of him. He's... all right, Jack said, lowering his voice as he turned back to Astrid. A bit scared, even if you wouldn't outright admit it, I think. Astrid's expression softened. Is he awake? No, Jack said. He tilted his hand curiously to the side. Why do you ask? Oh, you know, Astrid gave a one-shoulder trunk. If it were up to me, I'd give you some more time to come around, but Stoic wants to talk to you as soon as possible. We let it slip that you were both awake during dinner yesterday, so now he demands to see you. She sent Jack an apologetic look. Like, now. Now Jack's chest definitely felt tight. Out of all the strange names he'd heard since coming here, Stoic the Vast seemed to have made an impression on him. He couldn't say the name sounded like it belonged to some jovial old dad who just wanted to have a nice little chat over a cup of tea. If all the people in this village looked like Gothi and Hiccup's friends, he could just imagine what the chief would look like. That... And the fact that Hiccup had seemed nervous about this meeting did not help. But it would probably be fine, right? Stoic the Vast wouldn't throw them in a dungeon. Jack had been through scarier stuff than a chief with a weird name. Besides, Hiccup was far from imposing. Maybe you're taking after his dad. Astrid was giving him an expectant look. Earth to Jack? Jack realized he'd been quiet for too long. Oh, he said, straightening his back. Okay, well, I'll guess we just get that over with. I'll go wake Jamie. He turned around and came face to face with Baby Tooth, making him yelp. Baby Tooth, come on, he muttered, then continued over to Jamie's sleeping form. Baby Tooth remained by Astrid, sizing her up protectively. Jack kneeled by Jamie's side and hesitantly put his hand on his upper arm. Jamie, it's time to wake up, Jack said. He started when Jamie mumbled something incomprehensible, but it was definitely a protest. Aren't you excited to see the dragons? 
Jamie's eyes opened and fixed on Jack. He looked momentarily confused, and then his eyes widened. He used Jack as support as he sat up and looked around. Jack, he said. Oh, it wasn't a dream. Jack almost grimaced. No, I'm afraid not, he said. How do you feel? Jamie considered it for a moment before smiling tiredly. Better, he said. He then noticed something behind Jack, and Jack turned around to see Astrid peeking into the room. Oh, sorry, Astrid said when she realized she'd been caught, but she didn't go back outside. She had an inquisitive expression on her face, and Jack had a feeling the interrogation had already begun. Baby Tooth was still flying around her, a watchful expression on her little face. Jack got to his feet and gestured to Astrid. Jamie, this is Astrid, he said. Astrid, Jamie, she's come to, uh... To show you down the mountain, she answered. It's a steep walk, and you don't have dragons, so you'll probably have to get used to it. Where are we going? Jamie asked, his gaze shifting between Astrid and Jack. We have to speak with the chief, Jack said. He tried to sound casual about it, just so he knows we're not a threat or anything. The chief, Jamie repeated in an odd mutter. Cool. Jack smiled at him and offered him a hand. Jamie took it and got to his feet and picked up the clothes he dropped beside his fur skin. Jack was about to walk onto the balcony, but stopped when Astrid sent him a weird look. She raised a brow, looking at his bare feet. It's cold, you know, she said. What? Oh. Jack had placed Hiccup's boots beside the front door, and he gave them a long look. Okay. He put other shoes. They were just a little too small for him, but still they were heavy and bulky. All shoes, in Jack's opinion, were in the way, but these were especially in the way. And he also couldn't help but wonder at which point Hiccup had stopped needing both of his shoes, since these were a pair. He looked bemusedly down at them, and then at Jamie. Jamie looked amused, his lips pressed tightly together in an obvious attempt to hide his laugh. How do I look? Jack asked with a lopsided smile. Jamie giggled, which meant Astrid looked between the two of them with a perplexed expression. Jack just smiled at her and motioned for them to go outside. You're a strange duo, you know that, Astrid said as they followed her down the staircase by the side of the balcony, leading down to the patch of green grass. The sun was barely over the horizon, and the wind was cold and crisp. Morning dew made the grass shimmer in the sunlight. Careful, it's steep and slippery down here, she added. I guess we are a bit strange, Jack agreed in English, which made Jamie elbow him playfully. What language was that? Astrid asked, and though her tone was casual, Jack had a feeling this conversation was more crucial than she tried to make it seem. He didn't want to get on the bad side of this girl, or anyone in the village, and he knew they already seemed suspicious enough. English, Jack replied honestly. Astrid frowned. And where is that language from? Jack hesitated. Deciding not to get pedantic, he said, America. America? Astrid repeated, then shook her head. I've never heard of it. Is it far away? Jack hesitated. Oh, well, I wouldn't know, he said. I've never heard of Berg either. Right, and you don't know how you got here because of your memory loss, she said. Jack nodded stiffly, ignoring the confused look Jamie sent him. But then Astrid looked at Jamie. Her expression was kind, but Jack still felt a bit annoyed by the fact that she was trying to interrogate him as well. Do you remember anything? Jamie hesitated, and Baby Tooth quickly flew in front of him, vigorously shaking her head. No, he replied tentatively. It's... Uh, it's blurry. Astrid hummed and turned her head again. Down here, she said, showing them down a steep path that looked like it hadn't been used in a while, between the mountainside and a huge boulder. Astrid motioned for Jack and Jamie to go first. Jack knew what she was doing. She didn't trust them where she couldn't see them. But you still speak Norse, she said. Jack nodded. Our village was often visited by traders who spoke it, he said. It's been a while, so it's a bit rusty, but seems it has come in handy after all. Oh, like Trader Johan? Astrid asked. Jack hesitated. It's been too long, I can't remember their names, he said. I suppose that makes sense, Astrid mumbled. Maybe Jack was imagining it, but she seemed somewhat frustrated. 
As the path widened again, he and Jamie fell in stride with Astrid. He studied her for a moment. You know, he said, a thought struck the vast was the one who was going to speak with us. Astrid's lips tightened. It took her a couple of seconds, and Jack got a feeling she was contemplating whether or not to act innocent. Then she sent him an apologetic smile. The last time we let our guard down, it led to disaster, she said. Can't help but be cautious. Jack nodded. I get it, he said. But then you can't blame me for being cautious as well. We just woke up in this unfamiliar place, and we don't know how we got here. For all we know, you're all... He stopped himself, conscious of Jamie's eleven-year-old presence. You might not be as nice as you seem, he said. Astrid studied him for several seconds before she sighed and averted her gaze. If you're telling the truth, then yes, she said. I understand. And trust me, I want to believe you. You don't seem like bad people, she paused. Even if you're weird. Come on, it's down this way. The ground was getting closer and closer, and yet there was still a considerable distance left. Jack belatedly realized he'd have to walk all the way back up, and almost let out a loud groan. They walked the rest of the way in mostly silence, aside from a few directions from Astrid, and one incident where Jack forgot he couldn't fly and fell on his ass instead. Jamie was still laughing about it by the time they made it to the base of the mountain. The Great Hall is just around here, Astrid said, then gestured upwards. And Gothi's hut is up there. Whoa, why does she live up there? Isn't it dangerous? Jamie asked. Yeah, I guess, Astrid said casually. But I think it has something to do with being closer to the gods. The... closer to the gods? Jack asked, remembering Hiccup's funny way of swearing yesterday. Which gods are those? Astrid gave him a strange look. I know them, she said. But I think Gothi prays mostly to Mimir and Odin. She's the village elder, after all. She's very wise. Allegedly. Jack and Jamie exchanged bewildered looks. Right, Jack said. Of course. Astrid looked at them for a few more seconds before she turned her head and pointed at the stone staircase Jack had seen from Gothi's hut. Right up here, she said. We use the Great Hall for just about everything. Meetings, eating, shelter during devastating winter. Jack's heart did a jump. Huh? Devastating winter? Devastating winter, Astrid confirmed with a nod. They started climbing the stairs. Here in Burke it snows nine months of the year. We have winter and then we have devastating winter. It's harsh to live here during those months, but we power through it. Jack frowned. That bad, huh? He asked amusedly. Astra chuckled lightly. Yep, hopefully it won't be here by then. There are still a few months until winter truly sets in. They stopped in front of the entrance and she turned to Jack and Jamie. I mean, aside from the blizzard we found you two in, but that was... Well, anyway, she put her hand on the door and took a deep breath. Stoic and the others will be waiting inside. Stoic... She hesitated, biting her lip. Stoic is imposing, but he's just. You can trust him. Then why did she sound so nervous? Jack decided not to ask. Astrid sent them both a reassuring smile and pushed the door open. Good luck, she murmured. Thanks, Jack said. They walked inside. Jack tightened his hold around his staff, and Jamie walked closely behind him. They entered into a huge cave that had been built into a hall. There were long tables and a hearth where a fire was burning. Huge columns rose from the floor to the stone ceiling, and torches bathed the room in a dim and slightly menacing light. There was talking, but it momentarily subsided when Jack and Jamie entered. Jack's eyes landed on a small group of people sitting around one of the tables. They were all big and ragged, with horned helmets and bushy beards. However, one of them was quick to steal all of Jack's attention. The biggest and hairiest of them all, wearing the helmet with the longest horns. His beard was long and red, tied into several braids. His brows were bushy, and his gaze was bright blue and intense as they met Jack's own. Jack felt himself stop breathing for a moment. And I thought North was huge, he muttered in a whisper, and Baby Tooth tweeted in quiet agreement. There was no doubting it. This was Stoic the Vast. And with all three brutish men's attention on him, Jack almost missed the skinny figure standing off a little bit to the side. Hiccup. Saying Jack was relieved to see him was an understatement. Toothless was there as well, his green eyes watchful. Ah, Stoic said, getting to his feet. So these are the boys. Come, sit. 
He gestured at a couple of seats beside one of the other men to his right. He had blonde hair, a lopsided mustache, and a prominent underhung jaw. He smiled at them. Jack cleared his throat and carefully put a hand on Jamie's shoulder. It's okay, Jamie, he murmured. He led them down to the table. He kept nodding to them as they passed, and as Jack and Jamie sat down beside the blonde guy, he kept sat down on the opposite side, next to a guy with short black hair and a familiar face. The resemblance was uncanny. Could this be Snotlout's father? Jack tried to fool himself into thinking he was nervous. He looked at Stoic the Vast and sent him an easygoing smile. You must be the chief, he said. It's, uh, thank you for letting us stay. We'll see about that, the man that looked like Snotlout's father mumbled. Quiet, Spiteloud, Stoic chided. He then got to his feet and Jack tried not to let his poker face crack when he saw Stoic's full height. The guy was, well, vast. He watched Jack and Jamie, and Jack got the feeling he wasn't even trying to look menacing. His face was just like that. What are your names? My name is Jackson Overland, Jack said, then turned to Jamie, who watched him with a slightly perplexed expression. Right. Jamie didn't know Jack had introduced himself with his old human name. He sent him a reassuring smile and put a tentative hand on his shoulder. And this is my brother, Jamie. Jamie's eyes widened a fraction, and Jack gently squeezed his shoulder before turning back to Stoic. Stoic nodded. And why are you here? Jack glanced at Hiccup. He was sitting quietly in his seat, his lips pressed together. When he met Jack's eyes, he nodded at him. There's no reason, Jack replied. He tried to sound relaxed, but when Stoic narrowed his eyes at him, he found himself straightening his back. I mean, I can't remember why. I don't know why we're here. I don't even know how we ended up here. Stoic put his hands on the table, leaning forward. Then why should we trust you? Dad, Hiccup said, but was promptly ignored. Less than two weeks ago, Burke was under attack, Stoic said. He began to pace slowly back and forth, always keeping his eyes on Jack. However, Jack noticed he never looked at Jamie. Maybe he didn't want to frighten him. And now, two strange boys show up out of nowhere. What should I do with that? Jack gritted his teeth. Frustration was beginning to simmer in his chest. I don't know, he said. What should you do with that? Stoic stopped pacing. Jack was afraid he'd said something wrong. We are not in any position to let strangers take refuge in our tribe, he said. Dad, Hiccup said again, louder this time. The just boy, Stoic, the blonde man then said. Jack was surprised he was defending them. Stoic sent him a sharp look, and the man called Spiteloud made a disgruntled sound. They can't do anything while they're inside the village, Spiteloud said. But if they run away, now that's another story. As long as we don't let them leave. Jack didn't like the sound of that. He felt Jamie's hand hook nervously into his hoodie. Spite loud is right, Stoic said. What? Jack said without thinking. No, Spite loud is not right. We're not... Until we know your intentions, we can't let you leave, Stoic interrupted, sending Jack a dark look. Jack pressed his lips together. Until we know we can trust you, someone will have to make sure you don't sneak around in places you're not supposed to. And if you try anything... Stoic didn't finish the sentence, but Jack got the message. On the other side of the table, Hiccup was staring at his hands. Uh-huh, Spatloud said. Snodloud can do that. No, Stoic and Hiccup said at the same time. No, Hiccup repeated, getting to his feet as well. He gesticulated exasperatedly. Don't you think you're being a little too paranoid about this? Whatever damage they can cause, it's nothing we can deal with. And either way, I don't even think they will... What you think they'll do doesn't matter, Spatloud interrupted. It's too risky. Eh, I'm with Hiccup on this one, the blonde man said. One of them is a child, the other one is even more of a fishbone than Hiccup. Jack sent him a look, and Hiccup deadpanned. Thank you, Gower. You're welcome, Gower said with a jovial smile. Stoic sat back down. Hiccup, he said. You found them. I'll leave them to you. Hiccup looked from Stoic to Jack and briefly at Jamie. He sent them a half-hearted smile, but he seemed a bit exasperated about this entire thing. Got it, he said. And where are they supposed to stay? Stoic sighed, rubbing his face. Jack wondered if he was always this tired. It must be exhausting to be chief. Two mysterious strangers appearing out of nowhere probably didn't help his headache. 
Figure it out, he told Hiccup. Now go. We have other things to discuss. Spiteloud rolled his eyes but didn't say anything. Jack jumped when there was a sudden huge, heavy hand patting on his shoulder, and he turned to meet Gover's toothy smile. Welcome to Bert, lads, he told them. Jack quickly came over the small chuck of being addressed by a human adult. Oh, uh, thanks, um, Gover, he said. He got to his feet after Hiccup did, and Jamie followed his lead. He backed away from the table and met Stoic's eyes. He didn't know about the customs on Berg, but he supposed he should show some kind of respect towards the chief of the tribe. And then there was the part of him that didn't want to. He settled for a nod. Thank you, he said. Stoic nodded back, and Hiccup came over to them, toothless in tow. Sorry about that, Hiccup said once he closed the door behind them, heaving a great sigh. My dad likes to appear threatening towards strangers, but he's... Ugh. Jack hadn't realized how tense he'd been in there before his shoulders finally relaxed. No, that's... It's fine, he said distractedly. Jamie looked just a little bit paler than he had earlier. Jack placed his hands on his shoulders. Hey, he said. It's fine, right? We're okay. Jamie nodded weakly and let out a shaky breath. Yeah, he said. He then glanced at Hiccup, who was shifting his weight awkwardly. Then his gaze drifted to Toothless, who was waiting patiently behind him. Is... is that your dragon? he asked Hiccup. Hiccup's posture was a bit stiff. Jack supposed he wasn't all that used to speaking to children. But he smiled at Jamie and stepped aside to put a hand on Toothless's head. This is Toothless, he said. Toothless perked up once the attention was on him, and he panted over to Jack. Jack straightened up and took half a step backwards when Toothless gave a growl he hoped was friendly. Oh, uh, hi again, Jack said with a nervous laugh. He glanced at Hiccup, who smiled approvingly, and Jack carefully put a hand on Toothless's nose, petting him gently. Somehow it was just as incredible as the first time. He grinned and looked at Jamie, whose eyes were huge. Hiccup stepped forward. It's okay, he told Jamie, then crouched beside him the way Jack had done a moment before. Just hold out your hand like this. Jack stepped to the side as Hiccup led Jamie through the same procedure he'd made Jack do the day before. Even if Toothless had never shown any signs of violence, Jack still found himself tightening his hold around his staff nervously as Jamie averted his eyes, letting Toothless come to him. But Hiccup was right beside him, and Baby Tooth had settled on top of Jamie's head. If they were calm, Jack probably had nothing to worry about. Jamie gasped when Toothless's snout came in contact with his hand, but he didn't move. Hiccup chuckled. You can look now, he said. Jamie looked back, and his face broke into a smile. He laughed, and Toothless opened his eyes again, letting out a funny burble. Jack grinned, looked at the way the dragon somehow smiled back at them, and then noticed something else. Toothless's eyes were shifting between Jack and Jamie, and then up at Jamie's head. Jack frowned, glancing at Baby Tooth. He can see you? he asked her. Baby Tooth looked back at Jack. She smiled. He noticed Hiccup was watching, and Jack met his eyes. He realized he'd just been speaking to thin air from Hiccup's point of view, and he sent him a sheepish smile. So, he said, gesturing towards the village below them. How about a tour of Berg, since you have to keep an eye on us and all? Hiccup was definitely giving Jack a curious look, but he seemed to let it go for now. He smiled lightly. Sure, he said, but then hesitated. But, uh, just so you know... People have been talking. You can't expect them all to be friendly. As long as they're not all like that spite loud guy, I think we'll manage, Jack said. Hiccup shrugged. Can't promise you anything. We Vikings aren't exactly known for our big hearts and warm welcomes. But don't worry, they'll get over... Uh, are you okay? Jack and Jamie were both staring at Hiccup. Vikings? Jamie echoed. Hiccup looked cheapish. Uh, yeah, bad reputation, I know, he muttered. Uh, well, um, you seem friendly enough, Jack said, as if that was the reason for their surprise. He looked up at the sky, but the moon was nowhere to be seen. He sighed. Oh man, we're really far from home, aren't we?